Welcome back to another episode on the journey to searing the perfect steak in cast iron. On today's episode, we're gonna be testing whether it makes a difference to render the fat on the side of your New York strip once you've done searing it. The argument for rendering these really thick pieces of fat is that it's just gonna give you that much more of a softer feel when you bite into the fat. It's not gonna be that, that rubbery, chewy texture. So we're gonna give it a shot here. We're gonna sear both of these steaks the exact same way. The only difference is that we're gonna render the fat on one of these. So stick with us if you wanna see whether that makes a difference. So we're gonna be doing our dry brine. I'm not gonna go through all the steps and I'll put a link below if you wanna see the detailed explanation of the dry brine. But it's one of the things, one of the tests or experiments we've done here that really made a huge difference in the quality of the outcome. So we're just gonna pat the steaks dry, put them on a cooling rack like we've got here over top of a cookie sheet. And then we're just gonna simply add our salt. And we're using a Maldon finishing salt here, but we like to use this for our dry brining as well. Make sure you go generous with the salt, add it in, flip it over. Get both sides. Make sure you get the edges of your steak as well. Now we've got the steak seasoned here on the drying rack over a cookie sheet. So let's get these guys into the fridge for 48 hours. All right, let's get those steaks out of the fridge. They've been in there for 48 hours. Just look at these guys. Here, I'm gonna walk them up to the camera. Now this, it's almost like you can start to see the pigmentation of the steak has really moved into the marbling here. These are gonna be incredible. And again, this dry aging process, it really dries the surface of the steak. And so when we get it out there and these hit the cast iron, all of the energy is gonna be able to transfer into the Meyer reaction as opposed to having to evaporate any water that's on the surface of the steak. And this is gonna be, I already know, these are gonna be incredible crusts. All right, we've had this cast iron pan on the barbecue. We're looking for north of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got just under 600 here. So this pan is ripping hot. So let's go ahead. We're gonna put avocado oil in. Again, avocado oil has a higher smoke point than olive oil. So make sure you're using an oil that has a very high smoke point in this process. I'm just gonna move that oil around. Make sure we get a nice even coating there. All right, now let's leave this for four minutes. Gonna close down the lid and we'll check back in on them. All right, we're four minutes in. Let's flip these guys. And just look at that crust. That is unreal. Next level sizzle and crust. I'm telling you, if you haven't dry brined steaks before, it makes for incredible, incredible looking steaks. Now we're gonna add some butter. Now go generous with the butter. Now we've got some garlic cloves that we just crushed with our a palm. We actually haven't minced these, so let's get that in there. Now I'm gonna go get some rosemary. Now let's just ruffle the rosemary up a little bit here. Now toss that in, that ruffling just will help release some of the aromatics and the oils out of the herb. Now tilt this to one side and then just baste your steaks. Oh, this smells absolutely incredible. Just baste them over like this. Make sure you get some of the garlic and the rosemary actually up on the steak. There we go. Up on the steak. 
Got those flavors all integrated. All right, we're gonna do a final temp check here. 124. Oh. There, 126. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pull one of these steaks. We'll get that inside to rest. And the other one, what we're gonna do is steer the fat, fat cap. So we're just gonna take our tongs, get it up on the edge here, and make sure we give that, that fat cap a nice sear. Now what this is supposed to do is just melt that fat cap a little more, give the steak a better mouth feel, but we'll be the judge of whether it actually makes a difference or not. And we'll check out the difference. Look at that golden brown. Now certainly visually it definitely looks like it could be an interesting step to incorporate. Right, we've got these steaks inside. Again, we're gonna let these rest for 10 minutes and untented as always. And we're just gonna put on a little bit of garlic butter here just for flavor. So I wish you could smell this. This is always the hardest part of the cook for me is not just saying screw it to the 10 minutes and digging in straight away. But here we go. All right, so we've got these steaks inside. As you'd expect, with the only difference in how we actually prepared these being searing the fat cap or not, they both have that same incredible crust. You can hear it as the knife goes down the surface of the steak. The only difference, this is the one where we seared the actual fat cap. And then this is the one where we didn't. And you can see the one where we did, it's a slightly darker sear on that fat cap. And hopefully what that's done is just rendered it down a little bit more, made it a little bit more, um, you know, malleable and melt in your mouth as you bite into it, as opposed to that rubbery, uh, you know, that rubbery texture that you get sometimes when you've got a, a thick fat cap. So enough jibber jabber here. Let's just slice into these. All right, now let's compare on the inside. Nice medium rare here. Nice medium rare as well. See, just look at that. Um, now we're gonna test the fat caps. Why don't I try the original method here first? You know, the fat cap, you don't really taste it that much. Like it, I mean, you don't really taste it in, in the sense of feeling the texture as you chew through it. You know, again, these are prime New York sirloins. So maybe it goes to the grade of the meat, but you know, that's pretty smooth as we chew in. Now let's pick one here. It's got a big fat cap. At least of a similar size to the one we just ate on the other steak and now we'll bite in here. You know, on this test, it's hard to go wrong. Both of these steaks are absolutely glorious. If, if there is any difference, it is absolutely on the margin. And frankly, I don't know that it's enough of a difference to justify it. It's a pretty easy step at the end. You know, only searing it for an extra 60 to 90 seconds on the side, no big deal. So if you're aiming for perfection, why don't you go for it? But this isn't something like say dry brining where it makes a massive difference in the outcome. But there you have it folks. I'm gonna give this one the marginal difference if you actually sear your fat cap. So if you like this video, give us a like below subscribe hit that notification bell do all those things you always do and thank you so much for tuning in we really appreciate everybody being here and being part of this community we'll see you on the next one